Simplify and find the excluded values. And this one is more complex. It requires some factoring in the numerator and denominator. Always pull out the greatest common factor first before you start factoring the trinomials so you don't have to work with numbers that are as large. So I do have a common factor of 3 in the numerator, which is going to leave me with z squared plus z minus 30. Denominator, same thing. I have a common factor of 4. So that's going to leave me with 2z squared plus 9z minus 18. Factoring. So the numerator has a leading coefficient of 1, so that one's a little bit simpler to factor. And I know that I have a negative here, so it's going to be z minus something times z plus something. And if I look up here at factors of 30, I've got 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, 5 and 6. And I want them to add up if one is negative and the other positive. These need to add up to just 1. That means I'm going to look for factors that are close together. So that knocks this out and this. These aren't really that close together. Let's look at 5 and 6. So if I have a negative 5 and a positive 6 and I add those together, negative 5 plus 6 equals 1, which is the middle term. So the correct factorization of this would be that I have z minus 5, z plus 6. The denominator is tougher because the leading coefficient is not 1, but I know that what I'm going to end up with is 2z and then a z here so that I get 2z squared when I multiply my first terms. I also know that I have a negative here, which means that this is going to be positive and I'm going to have a negative sign over here or the other way around. It doesn't matter. Um, okay, so what I need are some factors of 18. So let's start out with that. I know that I need some factors of 18. But it's a bit more complicated because I have a 2 here that's also going to be multiplied. So the factors of 18 are 1 and 18, 2 and 9, and 3 and 6. Now let me look at what I have up here. I end up with a 9z. That's not a very large number considering that there's a 2 involved. So I'm going to be multiplying this 2z times this outer term. And if this was a large number, then I'm going to get a large number here. And I'm going to probably end up with something bigger than 9z. So I'm going to start out with numbers that aren't that large. And the easiest one to work with is actually 3 and 6. And I'm just going to use trial and error. So 2z plus 3, and then I have z minus 6. So the first term I'm not worried about. I want to look at the outer plus the inner because that will give me my middle term of 9z. So the outer would give me negative 12z, and the inner would give me 3z, which would be negative 9z. Well, I know I'm on the right track. I just need to instead make the 3 a negative and the 6 a positive, and then I'll get a positive 9z. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and make the larger number, which is 6, a positive, and the 3 a negative. And you can always double check this by multiplying it out to see that you get 2z squared. Um, and then you're going to actually this one changes around just a bit. I'm going to still have the 2z with the 3, but this is going to be a negative. That's why it's a good idea to always double check the factoring in a complicated situation like this. This is going to give me, let's see, an outer term of 2z cubed and then 12z. That's 2z times 6, negative 3z minus 18 when I multiply out the last term. So that's 2z squared plus 9z minus 18. Okay. That's what I started with. That's what I had when I factored. So I'm set there. This is the hardest part, doing all the factoring. Now, 
what I need to do is look for common factors. Three and four, no common factors. You can't really cancel out there. Z minus five, not a common factor, nor is two Z minus three. But I do have Z plus six as a common factor. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel those out. And that's gonna leave me with three times Z minus five over four times two Z minus three. So this is my simplified form. Now, finding the excluded values. Again, I'm gonna go back up to the original. And I'm gonna look at the denominator. And what I wanna do is set this denominator equal to zero and solve for Z. In order to solve for Z, I need to factor. And fortunately, I've already done that because that was quite a bit of work. So I just wanna go ahead and look at what I've already factored. I factored, I pulled out a greatest common factor of four from the trinomial, and then I factored the trinomial into this. So that's gonna give me four times two Z minus three times Z plus six equals zero. Divide both sides by four to get two Z minus three times Z plus six equals zero. Using the zero product property, I'm just going to go ahead and set two Z minus three equals zero, and z plus six equals zero. Okay. Let's solve for each of these down here where there's a little more room. So first, two z minus three equals zero is gonna give me two z equals three by adding three to both sides. Next, I'm gonna divide both sides by two to get z equals three halves. For z plus 6 equals 0, I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides to get z equals negative 6. So these are my two excluded values, okay? z equals 3 halves and z equals negative 6, those are excluded values. Simplified form is right here. And this was, as I said, pretty complicated, a lot of factoring involved, pulling out the greatest common factor and then factoring the numerator and the denominator, canceling out to get my simplified form, and then going back and taking this original trinomial, setting it equal to zero, writing it in factored form, which I already had, and then using the zero product property to find those two excluded values. Thanks for visiting educator.com. I'll see you next time.